Hey everyone, this is Nick and today we're taking a look at Tuxedo OS, the Linux distro made by, you guessed it, Tuxedo, but that can not only run on their own devices but on any other computer as well. So we'll look at what's different about it, what it does well, what it does less well, and also at the Stellaris 16, the newest entry in the gaming and workstation laptops from Tuxedo, and the advantages of running Tuxedo OS on a Tuxedo PC. And also we'll look at today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace and if you need a website but you don't know how to get started or you don't have any technical knowledge, then Squarespace will be your go-to platform. They have pre-made templates for every kind of website and you can completely customize these by just adding or removing blocks and reordering them on the page graphically. You can change the fonts, the colors, the visuals, everything. And when you want to start adding features to your website, Squarespace has a collection of modules that are just as easy to use. You can get a complete shop with online payments, a members-only area, a video gallery, and more. And to make sure people can actually access your website, Squarespace can also help you book your domain name. So head over to squarespace.com slash the Linux experiment or just click the link in the description below and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Okay, so what is Tuxedo OS exactly? It's the semi-rolling release Linux distro that Tuxedo makes and pre-installs by default on their line of laptops and desktops. So you would think you can't get it for your own computer, right? Well, no, just like Pop! OS from System76, you can download Tuxedo OS and install it on any computer you want. But why exactly would you want to? Well, Tuxedo OS isn't just Kubuntu, on which it's loosely based. It does a lot more than that. It comes with KDE Plasma, sure, but it fixes a lot of issues people might have with Ubuntu. Tuxedo gets rid of snaps, they have their own repos for additional drivers and apps, they have a hybrid rolling release model for the desktop, the apps and the drivers, and they have their own custom kernel with better hardware support and a few very useful utilities. And on top of that, they have a web-based restoration system that lets you fully format and reinstall your PC straight from the boot menu. So let's dive deeper into all of this. So Tuxedo has their own repos. These notably contain their custom kernel, which deviates from mainline Linux and from the default Ubuntu kernel in a number of ways. First, it fixes issues with external Thunderbolt controllers and boot delays linked to that. They also enable the Legacy Panel Self-Refresh feature, or PSR, which lets your GPU go to sleep for very small periods of time while the display doesn't have anything to refresh. The latest version, version 2 of PSR, that's currently in the mainline kernel, can be quite buggy, so they enable the first version when it works better to save battery power. They also add fixes for external displays flickering when connected to an Intel XE graphics, and they also add fixes for Realtek audio devices that can produce a very audible pop sound when using headphones. So this is a short list of changes, but basically what you need to know is that the Tuxedo kernel has fixes and better hardware support than the mainline Linux kernel or the Ubuntu kernel. And all their changes are mainlined into the main Linux kernel as well. The Tuxedo OS repos include a lot more than that though. In there, they ship more up-to-date drivers than what Ubuntu includes, like the MD GPU or Mesa drivers. They have firmware for their own devices. They have packages for web browsers that Ubuntu only provides as snaps, and for a few up-to-date apps that aren't in the Ubuntu repos or are outdated, like AnyDesk, the Heroic Games Launcher, VirtualBox, Ventoy, and more. It's very similar to Pop! OS in that regard. They're loosely based on Ubuntu, but they do have way more up-to-date kernel versions, driver versions, and a bunch of apps that are not in the Ubuntu repos for some reason. Now, Tuxedo OS isn't completely a rolling release, but it has a hybrid approach to this. While the base system and base packages are from Ubuntu, they ship drivers, a Linux kernel, and the KDE Plasma desktop on a rolling release model which means you're always getting the latest version of your KDE apps and desktop and a recent kernel version and its associated drivers. And this also means you never have to do giant upgrades every six months. Your system is always kept up to date. Of course, updates are only pushed once they've been tested, so you won't be getting them day one, but you'll be getting them faster than on Kubuntu, for example. And they will still have some testing done so you can be sure that everything works reliably. 
And since Tuxedo ships this operating system on their own devices, you can be relatively sure that it's not completely broken and that it works relatively well. They're not shipping a half broken mess to their paying customers. Tuxedo OS also embarks the Tuxedo Control Center. It's an open source graphical app that lets you set your power profile between a few presets like extreme power save, high performance, quiet, and more. But you can also create your own with control over the display brightness, the minimum fan speed, and the fan profile. So it can be as quiet or as loud as you need it to be. And you can set the CPU power limits and disable CPU logical cores and define their minimum and maximum frequency. It's a really powerful tool to fine tune a balanced power profile that's the best compromise between the performance you need and the battery life. Or you can just crank everything up to the max for the loudest and fastest gaming experience, for example. The Tuxedo Control Center also lets you set your encryption password if you encrypt your drive, and it lets you set a shutdown timer. You can also change the battery charging options to improve the battery's lifespan by charging it slower or never charging it up to the max. You can also right-click the tray icon for quick access to power profiles or to switch from the integrated GPU to the dedicated one. You can even get the Tuxedo Control Center on other distros through Tuxedo's repos, but they only have them for Ubuntu-based distros or OpenSUSE, so you might want to use that. Of course, I would be very, very surprised if this was not already in the AUR, in the Gen2 Package Manager, or even in a Fedora Copper repo. Now, on top of that, Tuxedo OS makes a few tweaks. First, they enable OS Prober, something that lets your system detect other operating systems if you dual boot. Second, in these boot options, you'll find a Web FAI option, which is short for Web Fully Automated Installation. What it will do is grab an ISO of Tuxedo OS, format your drive, install a fresh system, so you can reformat and reinstall your entire system if need be. Of course, if you prefer a live system, you can also just download a Tuxedo OS ISO and flash it to a USB drive. Finally, Tuxedo OS changes a few appearance things in Plasma, which I will say I'm not a fan of. The default color scheme uses a salmon tone that just doesn't look too good to me, and the folder icons they use are all gray with the same accent color, which again I don't really like. It's super minor and super subjective, and it's also super easy to change in Plasma settings. They also pre-install more stuff than Kubuntu like VirtualBox, Tilex, the Nextcloud syncing app, the Muon graphical package manager, or KTorrent. But everything is of course freely removable after installing. But that won't stop people from calling that bloat, because apparently everything other than the Linux kernel in a distro is bloat. So, is Tuxedo OS any good? Well, yeah. Basically, Tuxedo OS gives you the best KDE Plasma distro if you're not looking for the absolute bleeding edge, or the absolute best stability. They apply very minimal changes to the desktop. It's extremely close to vanilla, and you get the latest and greatest stuff from the KDE developers, plus a very up-to-date base for drivers and the kernel, which means it's always a better choice for recent hardware than KDE Neon or Kubuntu. And since they test things a lot, it's also really stable. I never encountered any crashes or problems or issues. It just works. And also they de-Ubuntu-fy the distribution, which if you're not a fan of snaps, for example, might be a good point. Now that's Tuxedo OS on a non-Tuxedo PC, but if you run it on one of their computers, you get a few nice bonuses. So we're gonna look at their Stellaris 15, which is their high-end mobile gaming or mobile workstation laptop. The Stellaris 16 is the latest entry in the Stellaris line. I already reviewed the 15-inch and the 17-inch model and they're really solid, powerful, portable workstations and gaming laptops. As a matter of fact, I own a Stellaris 15 laptop and it's currently the only gaming device that my girlfriend uses. The 16-inch model comes with a 16x10, 2560x1600 panel that has very vivid colors, 350 nits of brightness and perfect viewing angles. It can also refresh at 240Hz. You also get a Core i9-13900HX which is a 16-core, 32-thread CPU that can go up to 5.4 GHz. In Geekbench, this thing gets 2951 in single-core and 14933 in multi-core, which is extremely high. It destroys everything else I ever reviewed in single-core and in multi-core. 
It even beats an M2 Ultra in single core performance, which is something because those CPUs are supposed to be like the best in single core performance. It's better than any of my gaming rigs. You can pair that with an RTX 4060 or up to a 4090, which of course are perfectly supported under Tuxedo OS. My review unit has the RTX 4060 and testing that laptop in Cyberpunk, I got 49 FPS at ultra settings at the native resolution, which is really solid. At high settings and the native resolution, it reaches 59 FPS. RAM options go from 16 gigs of 4800 MHz DDR5 to 64 gigs of 5600 MHz DDR5. And for storage, you can get up to two 4 terabytes PCIe 4 SSDs. It comes in black only, but with the usual slew of keyboard options or your own custom keyboard layout. You also get Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. The laptop itself is super solid, and while it's pretty thick at 2.6 centimeters, it's necessary to accommodate the cooling. It weighs 2.5 kilos. And as with all Tuxedo laptops, you can open it up and replace the battery, the RAM, and the SSD yourself. In terms of ports, you get two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2, one USB-A 3.2 Gen 1, a full-size SD card slot, a headphone jack, plus a barrel charger in the back, the ports for the Aquarius cooling system, an HDMI 2.1 port, 2.5 gigs Ethernet, and Thunderbolt 4 that runs through the dedicated GPU. A very, very solid port selection. A second Thunderbolt port would have been nice, but I can complain. The keyboard is really excellent, with good key travel and a quiet sound with a soft bump, since it's a membrane keyboard. There's a numpad as well, and full-size arrow keys. You can also get it with a mechanical keyboard, the same that I reviewed in the Stellaris 17. It's amazing to type on, but a lot noisier, and if you work in an open space, your colleagues will definitely staple your forehead to your desk, or another body part if you're lucky, uh, unlucky if you're unlucky, I mean. The touchpad isn't glass, but it's very smooth, even though it's really small for this form factor. I'm pretty much spoiled with my Executive 16's giant smooth glass touchpad that is literally the best I ever used, recent MacBooks included. Still, this one is not bad, it feels solid, the click is nice. The speakers are decent, with a good amount of bass, but they'll start saturating at max volume. They're bottom firing, so if you place the laptop on a soft surface, you will muffle them easily. And the mic and webcam are potato quality, as is unfortunately too often the case. The mic will pick up on fan noise and everything else around. And the webcam, while it's 1080p and it's fluid and responsive, it will produce a pretty bad image if you're standing in front of a light source or you don't have enough light. It's not horrible, but it's really not great either. As per battery life, you get a 99 watt hour battery, which is the largest you can get if you want your laptop to get in a plane one day. On the power save mode, using the integrated GPU, it lasted for 7 hours with YouTube videos playing in a loop over Wi-Fi in Firefox with the display at 240Hz. Using the dedicated GPU instead, it lasted for about 4 hours. Of course, at 60Hz, you can expect way better battery life. All in all, it's a really solid workstation and gaming laptop. It will cost you 2080 euros for the base model with the RDX 4060, 16 gigs of RAM and a 500 gigs SSD. I think that price is decent for the hardware and the very solid build quality, the good enough screen, the good enough speakers, the good keyboard, the good trackpad. It's just a good package all around. But also, on a Tuxedo computer, you get a few cool things on top of the default Tuxedo experience. First, the Tuxedo Control Center gets better. You often will get a dedicated button to open it, especially in the Stellaris line of laptops, but you also get more features. You can control the color and brightness of the keyboard backlight. You can also control the webcam and its resolution, frame rate, brightness, contrast, exposure, dynamic range, and color balance. But what's more interesting is Tomte, which seems to mean leprechaun in Swedish, although Tuxedo is German, but I guess saying Wichtelmännchen uh, was not as user-friendly. Tomte is a driver configuration service for Tuxedo devices. It automatically recognizes the model you're using and it checks for the drivers and packages that will give you the best experience on this specific model. 
In the control center though, you can disable some of these changes if you prefer using the mainline drivers or not having certain configurations enabled. On the Stellaris 16, for example, I get fixes for CPU power for Intel 13th gen CPUs. I get improved drivers for the Ethernet controller. I get the NVIDIA drivers, the newer Mesa drivers for the integrated Intel graphics, and more. And you can install Tomta on other distributions as well, although it will need to recognize your device as a model that Tuxedo sells, so it won't work on every single computer. In the control center, you also get support for the Aquaris external water cooling solution that I already reviewed with the Stellaris 17 laptop. I left a link to that in the video's description. So, Tuxedo OS is a wonderful choice, whether you want to use a Tuxedo laptop or desktop or any other computer. It gives you a semi-rolling release with KD Plasma, its apps, better drivers, a better kernel, so if you use newer hardware, it's an obvious choice compared to Kubuntu or to KD Neon. And of course, if you use it on a Tuxedo PC, you also get a few nice advantages, especially Tomta for automatic drivers configuration. It's really, really nice. So that will do for this video. Thank you all for watching it. If you enjoyed it, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, well, you can always click that thumbs down button and let me know why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to support it, there are plenty of links in the description to do just that. You know how everything works. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.